Peter chapter 2. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2. I'm going to ask you to hold your Bibles in your lap. We're going to do a little quick uh, message, preaching, teaching, Bible lesson here this evening uh, in the Word of God. So you'll need your Bibles. I don't always have you turned all the scriptures, uh, but I'll ask you to turn three or four of them tonight. Uh, 1 Peter chapter number 2. Now, uh, I want to show you something here in the Bible. Everybody pay attention. Uh, watch your Bible now. Keep your hand in your lap there. And uh, I might be reading a reverse vision. You wouldn't even know it. First uh, Peter chapter number 2. Look at, look at verse 21. For he even hereunto were you called. Because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Bible said there, Jesus left us an example. I, I won't be like Jesus. Best I can. Don't you? All right. Now, if we're going to be like Jesus, we're going to have to figure out what he did, what he didn't do, how he treated people, how he talked, how he didn't talk. And so tonight, the message is some things Jesus would not do. Some things Jesus would not do. Now, if you're going to be like Jesus, you don't want to do them either. Uh, we, we're living in a generation that has a fake, disrespectful view of Jesus Christ and trying to, they live all kind of wicked ways and try to blame that on Jesus. That's, that's not the Jesus of the Bible. That's another Jesus they've made up in their minds. Uh, they, you, you hear it all the time now, these mega church pastors and mega preachers, they're always saying, uh, now, you know, man, Jesus wasn't no stuff, stuff shirt religionist, and he didn't, he wasn't all that religious crowd, and they twist that around there and saying, now he, he was down there hanging out at the, and down there with the, with the harlots and the drunks, and, and, and they give you the impression, they give you the impression that if Jesus was here now, he wouldn't even go to church. That he'd just be down at the bar somewhere having a beer with people. Uh, tell them, that's the impression you get. And that's what some of them believe. They actually believe that. I'll tell you something. That ain't the Jesus I'm preaching about tonight. The Jesus at the Bible did not hang out with sinners. He went where they were. But they were never the same after they met him. He didn't go down there to participate. He went down there to pull them out. And to come out among them. That's not they had the wrong Jesus. Tell the guy that back in the hippies, all them boys wanted to have long hair, and they all had their hair long and everything. The boy kept uh, daddy fussing with him. Get your hair cut. No, I like my hair, daddy. Get your hair cut. I like my hair, daddy. Get your hair cut. And they argued and argued. And he wanted to go somewhere, and uh, he said, uh, "Daddy, can I take the car tonight? Well, you can I have the keys?" And he said, "No." Uh, he said, uh, "He said you cannot uh, take the keys." And he said, you want him to get a haircut? And he said, well, Jesus had long hair. And Daddy said, yeah, and he walked everywhere he went, too. And that means what he was doing, he's just using that, trying to be like Jesus to get what he wanted. He didn't want to be like Jesus. Listen, all these guys out here has got long hair, they ain't doing that because they want to be like Jesus. They want to be that how they look to want to look pretty. Amen. Preach it, Brother Danny. That's right. All these guys are going to uh, these people will hang out with a sinner. They don't know that because they want to be like Jesus. Good night, y'all. Uh, the Bible said it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Have we forgot that verse is in the Bible uh, in our generation? And you know, Pete, you know who people get mad at? Me for saying it. Uh, we, we expect preacher to preach. Bible. And so anyway, we're going to talk about being like Jesus tonight. Some things he would not do. Number one. Number one, Jesus would not miss the worship services of his day. Take your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 4. We're going to, I'm going to ask you several verses here, so hurry, let's go. It's going to be short. Luke chapter number 4. And uh, you want to be like Jesus? I'm going to show you some things he would not do. Jesus would not do these things. Luke chapter number 4. Luke chapter number 4. And we'll look at. Uh, Oh, one of these verses over here in verse number uh, 16, something like that. Luke 4, 16. Uh, yeah, Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth 
where he had been brought up. That's old say, country saying. Where was he brought up? See? And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. As his custom was. Jesus would not miss the, the worship services of his day. Now in that day, he went to the Jewish temple. It was before the crucifixion. So it was on the Sabbath day, on Saturday. We are post other side of the resurrection. We go to church on Sunday, today, the Lord's day. But Jesus set the example, and when it was sun on, on, the, on the Sabbath day, if you went looking for him, you would find him in the temple worshiping God. You, know, you hear me? And you hear me well. You can say whatever you want to say. You can get mad, jump up and down, knock your seats over, swallow your bubble gum, whatever you want to do. It, Jesus would not uh, take off and go fishing on the Lord's day. Uh, Jesus would not uh, just stay home and watch TV on the Lord's day. He, his, his custom was uh, to be in the house of the Lord. I'm telling you, brother, uh, I, know, I know some people, uh, I know, I know, perhaps it makes the heart grow fonder. There's some people that sure must love their church. Because uh, they ain't been the coon's age, brother. Uh, and, every, and they got every excuse in the world. Well, this, and well, that, and well, this, and well, that. And I know stuff happens. I know sometimes you got to work. I know sometimes you're sick. I know sometimes you're on vacation. I know that. I know that. But I'm telling you, brother, if you're able, if you're able, if you're able and you can, you ought to march your little self through them doors back there and sit down in here and bring them kids in here and say, I, I, Jesus would not miss uh, the day. You know, the Lord had a good testimony. Remember over there in the early gospels where they couldn't find him and they got to looking for him. He's 12 years old and they couldn't find him. And they looked around here and looked around here. And Mary and Joseph said, uh, uh, let's go over there to the temple. Wonder why they went over there and looked. Wonder why they went to the temple and looked for Jesus. I think they knew. I think they knew. I bet I know where he's at. He's over there in the house of God. And in the, Now listen, all you teenagers here, you're 12, you're 13. I can't think of a better testimony for a mom and a dad or a pastor like me to have of a teenager. And when, well, like if I'm gone or, or your mom's sick or they have to be gone on vacation or something like that. I can't think of a better testimony for a young person to say, I uh, wonder where they're at. I guarantee you I know where they're at. Uh, they're over at that church. It's Sunday. And that, that's a good testimony. Amen. That's a good testimony. I, when I got saved, God put something inside me that made me feel like I need to go to church. I don't go to church because I have to. I go to church because I want to. I don't go to church because I'm afraid the preacher will fuss at me. If I don't, you crazy? I go to church because I feel like I need it. I feel like the church needs me. We all need each other. We get strength from each other. And Jesus would not miss the worship services today. I remember two nights ago I talking about that woman. She come in there. And then I bed. Mom, she said, get out from under that bed of church. He said, I don't want to. She said, I don't care if you want to or not. Get out from under that bed. We're going to church. He said, Mama, why do I have to go to church? She said, I'll give you three reasons. She said, I'll give you three reasons. It's Sunday, and the Lord wants us to go to church. You're 43 years old, and you're the pastor. <laughs> That's a pretty good reason. Amen. I wonder, you know, but it is funny that, you know, People expect the pastor to be at church. If you come in here one Sunday morning, if you come in here one Sunday morning and everybody said, uh, where's Brother Danny? Oh, I don't know. Well, he'll, he'll be here. Don't, you don't have to worry about that. Where's he at? And I just didn't show up and didn't tell nobody and didn't tell nobody to fill in for me or do my job. And I, you say, Bell, but you're the, I know, I understand that. I'm telling you, Jesus would not miss the worship services of his day. I'm telling you, get in there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, prayer meeting, everything the church is doing. Get in there. Get in there, people. I, you know what I love about Easter? And I know I know that it's just the Bible. It's a Bible. I, I like to see families come in on Easter Sunday morning, have the kids all dressed up. I know. I understand. Don't, please don't send me notes and letters. Uh, uh, clothes don't matter. Uh, the truth is, clothes do matter. The truth is, your clothes say a lot about you. The truth is, what you wear says a lot about you. 
I mean, when you see a woman up standing here in church and she's singing for the Lord and got a, a modest dress on and she's looking up singing for the Lord like that, and then you see one right beside her that has tight blue jeans and they're cut a hole from here to here, you can't tell me that clothes don't say something. Because you are not. If you don't, if you think that. Well, it don't matter. God looks on the heart. It ain't God we're trying to win. It's people. And people can't see the heart. All the people can see the outside. I, I know. I, I like to see all these men. Hey, boys, I go go somewhere and borrow it. Get you a tie. I'll let you borrow one. Wear it next Sunday morning. Say, glory to God. It's Easter Sunday morning. I'm going to put me on a shirt and a tie. You know what a guy told me one time? He said, I can't afford them big clothes like you got, Brother Danny. And I, I pay $6 for a tie. And and he had on an $80 football shirt. You can afford it. You can afford it. You, you just, you'd rather look like him and him. You'd rather wear your baseball cap hat backwards and, and you know, your blue jean and your tennis shoes. Is that the way you want me to do up here next Sunday morning? Uh, yeah, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be a hoot? Uh, Lord have mercy brother I'm telling you I like to see people come and come in and say brethren we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God and we, well, I'm not saying you got to dress certain I ain't stupid y'all but women should be modest and men should look like a gentleman and not like a not like him and him or, or they're like they're trying to be in a in a rap group somewhere amen hey Jesus would not miss the worship services of his day and all God people say number two Jesus would not yield to the devil I, I won't have you turn to these we'll never, we'll never have time to do uh, he would not yield to the devil in Matthew 4 the devil came to Jesus and the devil came tempting him and the devil came to Jesus that day after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and the Bible said afterward he was a hungry and the Bible said uh, he came out uh, there and, and here come the devil and the devil said hey, 40 days 40 nights and the devil said uh, uh, you're hungry ain't you why don't you turn that rock right there into a piece of bread you know the Lord looked down he, was, he had flesh like us he had an appetite he was hungry and he, he, he looked down and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something you've heard me say this before what would have been wrong with him doing that but his rock they, he, he He's the owned it all. He owns the cattle on a thousand hill and the rocks in the desert and everything else. If the Lord would have said, bam, be a yeast roll with butter running out both sides, he hadn't ate in 40 days, there wouldn't have been a thing wrong with that except for one thing. What was it? The devil told him to do it. See, if the devil tells you to do something that ain't even really bad, you ain't supposed to do it. Right? That's getting deep theologically. But there wouldn't have been nothing wrong with Jesus turning that rock into bread if he'd have wanted to. But he didn't do it because the devil told him to do it. Amen? That's right. And so the Lord said, I ain't going to do it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, out of that Bible shall man live. Now listen, when the devil comes tempting, like uh, uh, the girl sang there uh, in the song a minute ago. When Satan comes tempting and he brings up my past, I tell him I'm forgiven. Uh, uh, I'm free at last. Whatever that song, however that goes. And uh, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you want to you want to be like Jesus. Jesus would not give in to the devil. He told him to he told him to commit suicide and jump off of that. I guess the devil told every, most people, you live long enough, he'll put that in your head sooner or later. You'll go through a hard time or a bad time or a divorce or cancer or some car and you'll just say God just kill me I'd just soon die I'd just rather be dead people think stuff like that I guess most people over 40 have had enough trouble that at least that thought's run through your mind you wish you're just dead uh, but I'm going to tell you something tonight he did not yield to the devil he said I'm not going to do it uh, uh, he said uh well, why don't you just bow down and worship me? And he said, I'm not going to do it. You know what the devil wants you girls to do? You know what the devil wants you girls to do? You young people do? He'll want you to listen to music that does not respect the Lord. Like Swift. Uh, he'll want you to listen to old, old Swift the, the skank uh, because she's so popular. And he'll say, listen. Any song that encourages alcohol or sexual activity or anything like that, Jesus would not listen to that. And brother, he wouldn't know it. You want to be like Jesus? 
then don't listen to music. That may, you said it's got to get, I know, y'all, I ain't crazy. Uh, math makes you feel good, too. They say, <laughs> they say, oh, you got that DJ. Uh, I listen, uh, but listen, uh, that, listen, I don't know. They, all that stuff makes you feel good. I don't know, but I know one thing. Jesus wouldn't do it. He would not yield to the devil. So when you're driving down the road, the devil says, oh, I'll just put on a little, put on, a little, you know, uh, you know, I put on a little, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't too bad. I, I preached a little bit on me. Ronnie asked me yesterday, he said, uh, he said, Danny, can you do a little music? And I was totally unprepared. He said, can you do like you do at camp, music, guitar, you know, all that. And so I said, all right, I jumped up there and done a little something for him. Just show him beat. But here's what a lot of preachers don't understand. I, I hope they're all listening to me tonight. I might learn something. It, the music, music has a certain beat. All music has tempo. And just because a, a song has certain words don't mean it's good. Now, now Carrie knows exactly what I'm talking about. I, I think she's going to show me. But Christian artists now. That we're talking about independent Baptists. Uh, like People like us are saying different styles of music are fine because different styles bless different people. Now, you got to be careful talking like that because you got to draw some kind of line somewhere. That's right. You got to draw some kind of line somewhere. And I'm, I'm telling you, if I had me, I, that pulpit's too hard. But if I had me a, if I had me a drum, I'd go, uh, what's this, this, this beat right now? We will, we will rock you. See, you believe Jesus listen to that? Okay. Listen, the light's going to come on in some of y'all. Yeah. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rising up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me... Exact. Same beat. Light come on, doesn't it? Yeah. I get cussed for that. Shall we stop and let it sink in for a minute? I ain't trying to be ugly. How could you not know that? He said, why don't you like that song? That's why. That's why. The whole atmosphere changes with that kind of beat in a church. It, come on, y'all. You know I'm telling you the truth. And I, I understand every song don't have to have, sound just like Amazing Grace. Every song we did. I heard an old, listen to different thing. I heard an old Old story, how a Savior came. That's March. That's Christian music. That's Christian music. That's not flesh. That's not flesh. We'll do you a music seminar pretty soon. I teach music seminars. Yeah, so where'd you get your degree? I don't know. I figured it out uh, over, all, over all these years. Uh, I, I, it's right, though. Yeah. Well, Brother Danny, just because you don't get blessed by that don't mean somebody else might. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've been in services, brother, where the song was going real good, and all of a sudden somebody put something on like that, and the whole atmosphere of the place just goes, Whoa. it just goes flat. Boy, when he's up here saying, my Lord is taking good care of me. And it's not just the words. See? If a, if a man says, well, any style of music's all right, as long as words, okay, is this all right? Amazing grace, I see that's how I say that it's like me. I want to say my dad. Is that all right? There are people that like that style of music. Come on, preacher. Let her rip, brother. Amen. Amen. Listen, there ain't no excuse for you brats in here. There might be some of these churches on these Southern Baptist churches and some of these dead independent Baptists that let you slide. But you ain't got no excuse in here. Your eyes open, y'all. Your eyes open. Oh, no, not that. No, I, I, I. Practice what you preach. Different people like different styles. It's the spirit. It's the spirit. It's the spirit. That tempo. Brum, 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 bum, bum. I heard an old, old, when we all get to. That's a lot different. When we get to heaven, baby, we're going to see Jesus. You, if you can't see the difference in that. I had no idea I was going to do this little seminar here tonight. 
I'm going to start traveling the country doing music seminars. And I'll go broke and starve to death, brother. Well, ain't nobody wants to hear this. Amen, brother Danny. Let her rip. Hallelujah. Jesus would not. Jesus wouldn't put an earbud in his ear and take off down to Jerusalem. Uh, listen, there's a bunch of junk like that. Some things Jesus would not do. Good night. I'm out of time. Got a whole bunch more. I'll just give it. Listen. How about this one? Jesus would not be moved by flattery. In John chapter 3 and verse 2, Nicodemus came to him. He said, Master. Big shot. Nicodemus was a big shot. If you was going to have a ministry in that day, you'd want to be on the good side of Nicodemus and all you got. Like a lot of young preachers. I, I appreciate our young preachers here because they've told me. They say, Brother Danny, uh, they say, Brother Danny, I know that uh, in my ministry, um, I, in my ministry, the, uh, we, we, we'll get sort of a black eye from some people because of our stand on the King James Bible, because of our stand against contemporary music, because of our stand, and then, of course, being associated with me. Uh, that have, but you know what they said? They said, it don't matter. I'm going to stand up for what's right. Let God, God will bless my ministry. And they're getting doors open. God's opening doors for them. And I, listen, if you have to politic and hook and crook and suck up to this one and suck up to that one and go over here and not go to that camp meeting or go to this town, hey, listen, brother, I have to get them. That ain't no way. Jesus didn't do that. Nicodemus said, uh, Master, uh, we heard that you're a teacher come from God. And, oh, we'd like to honor you and have you. Jesus looked right back at him and said, you got to be born again, bud. I, bam, that flattery did not work on him. Amen, flattery. You better watch people that flatter you all the time. You better watch people that want to flatter you and brag on you. It ain't, it ain't true no way. I mean, well, everybody likes to be bragged on, but it's dangerous. Amen, it sure is. Never, flat, never flatter people too much. It's all right to brag on somebody. It's all right to pat somebody on the back. It's all right to tell somebody you appreciate them. Beware of people that flatter you all the time. I used to be around this preacher years ago, and, he made me nervous. He, he'd come around me and he'd say, all the time I'd see him and, he, and he'd say, Danny, you are absolute. I've never in my life. And he'd just brag on me. He said, your memory. He said, you never forget nothing, do you? I said, no, I don't. But that, is that a blessing? And he said, but you're just so. And he'd brag on me and brag on me. And I always worried. I thought that guy was going to stab me in the back. It always makes me nervous when people build you up too much. There ain't nothing wrong with saying I appreciate brother so-and-so. He's been a blessing to me. I love my pastor. I love my, my Sunday school teacher. I, there's nothing wrong with that. When I go to church, I always tell people to support the pastor and love and all that. But I, I, I'm leery of people that just, just got honey dripping down both sides and just eat you up. Oh, you, you got to be careful about that. Uh, it didn't work on Jesus, brother. Uh, that flattery didn't work on him. Amen. That's right. Uh, that, that old rich guy came to him one time he said, Good master, what must I do? Oh, you're so good. Oh, you're so wonderful. What do I got to do to get eternal life? And, and Jesus said, ain't none good but God. Yeah. See how he did that? Uh, he wasn't saying he wasn't good. He was saying that guy thought he is good, and that guy didn't realize he's God. When he said there's none good but God, he's right. There ain't none good but God. He wasn't saying he wasn't good. But that guy was trying to butter him up. Butter him up. Be careful of people who, uh, y'all will have, sometimes preachers do this. They'll come through and they'll try to butter you up, try to get you to leave your church and come to their church. They will. I've, I've had preachers in this area take one of, uh, some of the main men of our church and take them out to eat. And I was a pastor 20 years and I never took them out to eat. And I ain't going to. I mean, I would. If you have a problem, we need to sit down and talk. So, you know, I'll be there for you. But y'all know I don't go around the house house politic and say, now you're on my side, ain't you? You're with me, right? No, no, no. Flattery, flattery. Jesus would not bow to flattery. That's right, brother. Now, I'm telling you something else. Right quickly, Jesus would not quit. He would not quit. All the way to the cross. Brother, when he died, he didn't say, about God are done, Lord. Uh, into thy hands I come in, must be. <laughs> no, he didn't, he didn't. When he died on the cross, he didn't say, well, I give it a good shot. He said, it is finished. Got it done. 
Got it done. By the grace of God, you want to be like Jesus? Don't quit. If you get your feelings hurt, come back next Sunday. Somebody get your parking place, put a scratch on your car, and don't tell her about your baby's ear in the nursery or, or give you, does something that hurts your feelings. Get over it. Suck your thumb. Walk back in here next Sunday and say, I'm coming to worship. I am not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. Come hell or high water, brother. By the grace of God, I'm in this thing all the way. All the way. Would not quit. I'll hurry and I'll, through. I'll be through tonight. Jesus would not worry. He would not worry. They said, you ain't got nowhere to live. He said, foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. Son of man ain't got nowhere to live. You worried about it? Nope. That's a good way to live. Jesus didn't worry about how he's going to pay his bills. He knew God was going to take care of it. You do what you're supposed to. And God will handle everything else in your life. You say, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this, brother. I tell you, I make it through it. You do what God wants you to do. You do the right thing and honor God, and you will come through whatever kind of mess you're going through. I, I was going to have a whole thing on that, but I'll move. Number six, Jesus would not discourage others. Jesus would not discourage others. In John 8, they brought this woman to him, they slung her down there, said, we, she committed adultery. We caught him. Caught him. Right there. Let's stone him. Y'all get me a big rock. I'll get me a big rock. I'll get me a big rock. Look at that. And the Lord looked down at that woman. You want an example of Paula? You Christians, you good, godly, wonderful Christians. You want a good example of Paula? The Lord looked down and he said, look, ain't none of y'all got no right casting no stones. Ain't none of y'all got a right to open your mouth to her. He said, now look, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. And Jesus did not go back in town and say, Lord, you wouldn't believe this woman. She, that old wicked low-down skank, they caught her committing adultery. Don't have nothing to do. He didn't gossip about her. He forgave her. He put it, uh, uh, he put it uh, uh, under, under his blood that would be shed. It was going to be forgiven and washed away. He told her to keep on going and doing right and didn't go back and gossip about her. A real Christian that wants to follow Jesus, when we have somebody come to our church that's not dressed right or don't look right or don't uh, maybe smell a little bad, you don't Go run your mouth all over to everybody else and say, How come they, who brought her in here? How'd they get in? Uh, you'll pray, you'll pray, and when they get right with God, you'll hug their neck and try to be an encouragement to them. Jesus would not discourage other people. Number seven, I'm done. I wish we could spend a long time on all these. Jesus would not work a miracle for his own profit. There's your real study. He could have. I mean, there's a bunch of cases I could give you, but the first one, the best one, is when he's on the cross. And all he had to do is say, 10,000 angels. And he stood there and stood all by himself. He had the power, but would not use his power for his own personal benefit. You want to be like Jesus? Reckon? You know what he wouldn't do? He would not work a miracle if it's just to benefit himself. Every miracle he did was for other people. Boy, I don't know about you, but I think Keon ought to come up here and play something and Brother Danny ought to hit the altar and say, I want to be like you, Lord. More like you. Less like me. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Some things Jesus would not do. Some things Jesus would not do. Well, Danny, Lord in mercy, I'm, I'm under conviction. Help us to live like thee, more like thee. Less like me. Lord, I pray this evening that you would forgive us. Every one of us. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to be more like you and less like me. Have your way in our hearts. God, do what ought to be done. Move in every life. We'll thank you and praise you for it. Lord, as we journey through this old sinful world, God, help us to Lord, help us to learn to be more like you and less like us. Lord, we're in the way. We get in the way. 
Lord, we get in the way. Help us, oh God. Help us, help us, Lord. Help me. I failed you. I failed you so many times. I'm such a sorry, good for nothing Christian. God help us. God help us. God help us. Please, Lord. Please, Lord, help us, God. Please, Lord, help us, Jesus. Help us bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Help us to be humble, be right. Do that that bring honor and glory to your name. Have you in our hearts this evening. Lord, bless every single person here tonight. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen, amen, amen. So I'm still praying tonight. I'm still praying tonight. Amen. Amen. Need to make some adjustments in your Christian life. Now's time to do it. Amen. 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 I'm about to scream my head out off the last two days. And so I had a little, <coughs> a little bit of, uh, rough there on my throat, so I apologize for that. But uh, let's uh, have a quick bus meet. It's three minutes after seven. If y'all won't talk and disappear, we'll have a quick bus meeting uh, right here in this section. All bus workers, bus drivers, Sunday school, or, or, or junior church workers, bus workers. Let's do it right here in this section. Let's hype out bus kids over here anyway. Oh, look at all that crowd over there. All them, Ange, all them's my deacons. Huh? Huh? Yeah, hold on. Amen. You definitely are. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 How many do you have? Like 12, at least 18 kids tonight. Amen. Ain't that something? That's a ministry. I told her before, I, I, she has a gift. She has a gift of these young girls. They, they flock to her. And I said, use it. Whatever gifts God give you, use it for his glory. And some more you got that gift. If you just use it. All right. Um, uh, uh, all bus workers, bus drivers, junior church workers will meet right here, right now, right now. The rest of you, uh, you're dismissed. Don't forget sunrise service next Sunday morning, 7 a.m., 7 a.m.